Okay, so today we're going to go over basic pump application. So we're going to go over the basics of how pumps work, but more of what we're really going to go over is uh, troubleshooting. Right, so if the pump's not working, why is it not working, and then how we can fix the problem. Okay, so pumps work on the vacuum principle, right? So what they do is they'll actually draw air out to create a push, right? So push versus pull. So if a pump was just to pull, there's limitations on it, right? We can only have a maximum suction lift of 25 feet. Okay, so if we want to have our pumps run freely without you know, having a lot of maintenance, or I shouldn't say maintenance, a lot of issues in the future, we need to make sure we keep up on our maintenance, right? So the root of all the problems here, they're all different, right? The thing about pumps, it's, it, they're a little bit different. We can use our senses to kind of troubleshoot, right? If the motor is hot, we could, we could you know, touch it or put something on it. And if it's running hot, something's wrong, right? Too much power, um, something slowing down the motor so it's working extra hard, something like that, right? Can cause it to warm up. Um, we can listen to it, bearings, um, cavitation, obviously visual, we could see it leaking. So these ones we can do a lot of touching and looking around to see if there's an issue with it. We're going to go over troubleshooting. Again, that's, that's our main focus on this class. So what we're going to be looking at, like I said, we use our five senses to pinpoint. Normally, our problem is what we call suction related, right? So. I'm going to use my amazing drawing skills again. We have our big pump. And we got our other water coming out too. So here's my valves. Here's my meter, okay? That's my pump. Okay. So water's coming in this way, right? Coming out this way. So Suction related is going to be before the pump, right? Mechanical is going to be the pump itself. And then system. System is after. Okay. And in there somewhere. Okay. Right, so it could be a combination of any of the two, but most of the time, number one, it's going to be suction related. Right? So I know in the beginning, I get this sometimes. It seems kind of contradictory, but they say, well, the pumps don't suck. Why is that called the suction side? Well, by pushing, we create suction behind. So that's what we call it. So suction before the pump, mechanical, the actual pump and the motor, and then system is after, right? So, okay. So these are our three suction, number one, cause for failure. Mechanical is probably our number two. Very rarely do we have a system side failure, right? Because that actually doesn't really have much to do with the pump. Unless we have a big break and there's not enough back pressure and it's not keeping it prime or it to us. So uh, no liquid being delivered, right? So that means we're not getting anything. So the pump's on, it's not really giving me anything. My number one reason that the pump is not primed, okay? So what does primed mean? Primed means I have my liquid, so in our case water, is being delivered to the pump itself, right? 
So think of it just like um, something that we use in landscaping almost every day, right? A blower, and you guys might not because you're installing, but we have blowers, hedge trimmers. We have a primer, right? Because uh, when the carburetor runs, it runs dry, correct? And then we have to press the primer because it brings it in, right? To make sure that there's enough solid um, gas in the line. This is the same thing we want, or our pump always needs to have a solid backing of water into it, in our case, right? So some of them are self-priming, where they make sure that it does it by itself. Some you have to do the hand pump. If you guys ever use the big diesel generator, same thing, there's a primer pump. You got a pump to get liquid, so in this case gas, delivered to the, to the motor. All right, so basically we want to make sure that the main line coming in is always full, right? So if we have some sort of issue where someone turns off the backflow, or there's maybe a gate valve, something like that, something that we would run into. Uh, if our suction line is clogged for any reason, you know, if we have a filter or something like that, and if, if there's not enough water coming into the pump to, um, to meet the demand coming out of it, then it's going to run out, right? And once it does that, once it senses that there's not enough water in there, the sensor is going to shut it off. I have a question. I don't yeah. know if they would have the same product pressure, but um, you have the water meter. Yeah. And then you have the pump or, or before anything else, and then you would have... Well, we have the backflow. Okay. So, it's not a meter. Look, it's not backflow. Okay. We can't have anything between the meter and the backflow. No podemos tener nada antes de la de la mira y el y el, y el backflow. Right. Tiene que ser la mira y luego el backflow y luego ya después lo que lo que vaya, verdad, la pompa o master valve, el flow sensor. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, that's the number one. So just to remember that. Right, so we're looking at suction connection, so the inlet. This is not recommended, right? For these reasons, right? There's no, this is where it's pulling water out, so if you have a well or something like that, in this case, <clears throat> we have no filter, foot valve, right? The elbow is too tight of an elbow, we want an elongated elbow. On our inlet side, our suction connection, we don't want to have any gate valves standing straight up. We want to have them on the side. Because as water moves through, air rises to the top always, right? We'll get cavitation in here. Once we create that, then all of those are going to go right into the pump and start attacking the propeller. That, right? We definitely don't want to have an elbow just going straight in. We want to have a nice stream of water coming in. Uh, the less fittings, the better, right? Because any potential air leak that I'm going to get is going to be a result of it going through the fitting, right? Just like anything else. Okay. Okay, so quick look at if the pump is not um, meeting rated flow or head, so if it's giving us extra water and it's giving us a little boost, it's not giving us enough, right? So we want to look at any air leaking through our gaskets, so anytime we have our flange put together, um, a quick and easy way to check that is if you have a trash bag, right? Those are pretty easy to get our hands on, and what we do is when it's running, we take the trash bag, wrap it around the flange. If there's a leak, I won't be able to pull that out right, because it's pulling the air in, it'll suck in the bag, right, so if you can do that around all your fittings, I do that, I used to do that, I made a maintenance plan, I'd go out once a quarter and check all the pump systems, so I just had a checklist, and that was one of my checks, check all the fittings, and I just had a bag, it's very low tech, it's very easy, you know, it's not a thousand dollar tool or anything we have, right, we just stick that around, you can say, oh, no, that one's good, you know what I mean? Dice que cuando le chequea 